And last time we talked about how can we calculate cloth value using the state of DA combined with the literals to get my cloth value. But this is one simple cloth representation. If we want to have multiple clauses, then how can we do it? Well, if we see the entire TAs, eight of them, right, as a team, we call it TA teams. And if I duplicate this setup, so we have two TA teams, and in, in this scenario, we have two clause value. They are all independent, but they're sharing the same inputs little. And if I further duplicate them, now we can have a four clause system with four TA teams, independent one, sharing the same inputs. Well, you may ask, how can we get the output of the system based on this setup? Well, before we move on to there, we need to talk about the clauses. You see clauses in this scenario have four clauses, but if we assign a polarity to them, in this case, if the clause index is odd, we call it positive polarity clauses. If it's even, we call it polarity and negative polarity. Yeah. So, so this is a seg set up to segregate the clause from odd polarity and even polarity. The reason we did this is we want to facilitate the summation function. In each summation function, we will associate a same amount of positive polarity clauses and negative polarity clauses to them so we can um, do the computation. And the result of summation will come through a threshold holding function to generate an output. So the output in this case is the output of the settler machine. So like any other machine learning algorithm, the settler machine will take the input literals, which is the binary representation of the input features, to the system, going through the inference state. Now we're only talking about inference state in this tutorial. And, and combining with the state, combining with the um, clause value, summation, threshold hold, we'll get the output of the central machine. Will be binary representation because it's going through this threshold holding function. Neither gave it to one or zero. And the representation can represent different classes, can represent possibilities. It depends on the application you used. So you may ask, what does this summation and threshold holding function works? Well, that's very easy. So before we move on to this part, we need to say, um, we'll change the setup a little bit. And in this setup, we introduce two more clauses. So we have four clauses associated to one summation function, like what we said before, the polarity. We need to have the same amount of polarity for positive polarity clauses, two of them, to negative polarity clauses, right? These four clause value compute from four different um, clause computation module. Um, the summation algorithm in here is can be described in this function. And the social this can be described in here. Let me just quickly run through this. Well, the the th summation function will take will sum the clause value if they have the positive polarity. Will subtract the sum of a po sum of a clause value with negative polarity if the value from this subtraction, if 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 big and equal to zero, my function u will return one, which means my output will become to one. In another case, if the summation result is smaller than zero, 
my y will become to zero. So you may ask, this is some quite simple to do, but have you ever think about why we need positive polarity, negative polarity? Well, what does the um, cross value actually means? What does c equal to one mean? C equal to zero means? Let me just introduce a simple example to show you how it works. Here is a scenario. There is um, two team, blue team, and red team. They are trying to decide why whether to have blueberry or red rose for the best vegetable of the year. So they are deciding on this issue. But we want to use a democratic way, which is we allow them to vote. We allow them, we collect the opinion of these two teams to decide whether we choose the blueberry or red rose. So each team have two team member in in blue team the class one class three represent a um, blue team in the red team we have c two c four and the interesting thing about this they were going to vote on this issue so they can only the interesting thing about this voting is they can only say i want the blue team member can only say i want blueberry or i don't want blueberry so the person who don't want the blueberry is c1 he said i don't want blueberry but c3 said i want blueberry so the interesting thing about this, the blue team cannot say I don't want red rose or I want red rose. You see what I mean? So in the same idea, the red team said I want red rose. Another member of them said I also want red rose. Right? The same idea applied to red team. The red team cannot say I want blueberry. It doesn't well work like this. It's betrayal. It's, it's unacceptable. So, so based on the summation function, we can quickly calculate their voting result. So we're collecting the positive polarity minus the negative polarity, summation of them. So we can get this uh, 1 minus 2, which is minus 2. Minus 2 is smaller than zero so in this result we will get y equal to zero so we will choose red rose for the best of the um, veggie of the year so, so this is one scenario imagine another scenario imagine another scenario if both of the blue team says we want blueberry and miraculously, the red team says we don't want red rose complete at all. So the result will be very easy to calculate, which is 1 plus 1 minus 0 equals 2. So in this round, we will choose blueberry. So this is how this clause computation works which is if you if clause equal to one which means they're casting their vote if equal to zero you can say it's not vote um it's matter Be you remember we we segregate this team as two um, different team red team and red um, and blue team you may see the difference why because in the blue team, they can only decide to have blueberry or not. The red team can only decide to have red rose or not. You see, we segregate these two teams as two different groups to solve the, um, the single problem at the time. So this is the reason we want to introduce the polarity of the clauses, which is allow them to decide 
what kind of inputs to have, not to deciding um, which is like multiplexer. They, they, they don't do this. So this is quite a different compared with normal voting system in the, uh, in the real life. So now you know it, how can we calculate the clause? How can we get the output? And why we need different polarity? Great. So that's it. I, in the next video we talk, we're going to talk about uh, the feedback module mechanism, how the feedback works. But by now, you probably will have a really great general idea about how inference work and the calculation involved with it and how can we implement into the hardware. So I hope you learn something. I hope you find quite different it is settlement machine is quite different with neural network. If you want to learn the comparison between these two algorithms, you should head to the um, the poster video I posted um, a few days ago. I look forward to see you again.